Alright. I won't hesitate is asking when I'm chasing a survivor and they are far away, should I put the mirror behind them or in front of them to cut them off? Oh this this is already answered a while ago. Mm hmm Alright, let's just move on. <laughs> Parlos, Parlos is asking, how do you find Mindsai in all matches? <laughs> this I is, wish this I is find Mindsai. Somewhat easy. Yeah, I somewhat, mean, depending. I mean, if you're wearing a headset or an earphone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would help. So you just listen, you listen to the direction of the ping, and then you go according. Yeah, exactly. But I wish I found all the guys. They because in high tier they don't usually use it instantaneously. They just hide until someone like the bloody queen is on someone, then they ping. And then um you're already occupied. Yeah. But um you just listen out for the ping and then direction. Listen towards it. For so Bloody Queen stream when? <laughs> I'm already I already have those two bloody <laughs> <laughs> you got them, so you got them. Ubu Depression is asking, when do you stop tunneling someone? And is it a good idea for BQ to switch to Abnormal? You could just skip the second question and focus on the first one. Yeah. So typically, a lot of the times, if I'm getting hard kited early game, uh, the survivors will usually run into an area that uh, coincides with another survivor. Mm -hmm. So that's usually when I stop tunneling and I'm like, okay, let me switch over to this one because I could add pressure to this survivor and then get them off of the cipher and then mm -hmm. start focusing them down because they're probably in either a bad, bad Um, Again, that depends on the area that they're in, but if they're not on a cipher and that other person has to rotate accordingly, then that cipher that was being done is not being done anymore, which cancels a lot of the cipher rush and... You're already adding pressure for the game. So usually when you are in range of someone that was on a close uh, cipher during the kite, that's usually when I'm done w chasing my initial person. So that's usually that's usually when I'm getting hard kited though. Mm -hmm. Which does happen. I am always <laughs> asking, all for one, are you approachable on Discord? I am. My DMs are always open and I haven't... I haven't. I have never denied like a DM or a question or anybody up to talk. So if you want to just come in silo, thank me or ask any questions. DMs are always open. All right, for Dream Eater number one, where and when are good places to use her mirror? For the second question, should we focus on camping or bring? What's this? I think he's referring to wanted order. I got my eye on you. <laughs> but, oh. <laughs> yeah, I think, I'm pretty sure that's one. <laughs> yeah, that's wanted order. And for the last question, what maps are good for her? Okay, so where and when? So usually you, there's two ways you could in, like play Bloody Queen's early game. One way is to instantly use the mirror like right in the beginning and get into a, like someone's spawn and right into their face immediately and then start a chase. Or you could wait and then patrol the spawns and look exactly like and see who you're looking for exactly. Because instant mirroring is good and it could get you into a chase right away, but you also run the risk that that person's a mercenary and you have no mirror image. Mm -hmm. So if it's a mercenary, okay, cool. You just found out they're a mercenary instantly. You can rotate more quickly, but you don't have a mirror image to do anything with for the next roughly 20 seconds because you need to wait for the mirror image to go down and you need to wait for it to come back up. Or you could, like I said, just patrol and then use your mirror image accordingly. You, If you get into a position where you don't have to use it early and you found your priority target, then you're in a pretty good spot because you could just get a hit and then use your mirror image to get another hit. Um, should we focus on camping or wanted order? What ability do we bring? So wanted order, it's a, it's a coin flip because... Well, not really a coin flip because you can see who's on a, which cipher and make a guess based off of that. Mm -hmm. So typically, if during a chase you hit a survivor, you want to look around, see which ciphers are being done. Regardless of what, regardless of anything, you want to see which these ciphers are, are wiggling. Depending on like you know if there's a mechanic, obviously, then there'll be one than three ciphers uh, some of the time. 
But you just want to keep note of that. And then once you get them down, you want to pay attention to which cipher stops wiggling or whatever wants the order puts on a person. Mm -hmm. So you could use that one in order to pressure a cipher or you could make a guess or not make really make a guess, but keep track of which cipher stops wiggling and then note the route that the mercenary takes. And then you could use your mirror image to hit them from that range. And then you could double hit them by the time he gets into range or even stuff the save. Um, typically in high tier, it, that usually does work out in your favor, but that also, again, requires accurate mirrors, which, again, is that whole other topic that I discussed earlier. So make sure you're just confident with those mirrors before you go for those long-range uh, double hits um, when the rescues are coming in. Uh, what maps is she good in? So personally, like pe you will see people say, oh, big open maps, Moonlit Lakeside. But again, that, that decreases the downside of patrolling the ciphers with um, your image when you're camping. Usually you want to have full control and full range of the entire map with your image itself. And then you could just put, even if you don't get a hit, you're pushing them off the cypher and slowing down the cypher. So, person, so personally, her best maps are Arms, uh, Sacred, uh, and Leo's. How about, um, like how about I, Red Church? Red Church is actually personally her worst map. Now, the reason I say it's her worst map, granted it's small, but there's a lot of... Uh, Walls. Yeah, a lot of areas to, if you're not paying attention to where you're placing your mirror images, you will get stuck and you will start hitting walls. <laughs> and I fall victim to that a lot. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of good areas in Red Church to where it's, it won't work out in her favor. That's actually personally her worst map. Um, like I see a lot of Bloody Queen struggle with that map in particular too. And then Lakeside and Moonlit lie right in the middle. Because they're good, obviously, they're good hunter maps, but they're not typically the best for her. Since she doesn't, mm -hmm. since that map pressure, she does have good map pressure, but she can't just patrol the ciphers as well as she does on Arms, Sacred, or um, Leo's. She can work on Red Church because, again, small map, but it's just a lot harder to get those tight yeah, um, mirror choppy. images off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, precisely. All right. Raya Hamlin is asking How do you manage mirror image? I can't hit right always. Mm hmm. For the second question, how should you use mirror when being kited? And lastly, how do you use the mirror to turn for? Um, so I'm assuming the third one is like uh like the little like turn she does with her fingers. Mm -hmm. Um so the first and second question basically relate to one another. Um it all comes down to knowing the proximity. So if you are a specific distance away from your mirror image. Your mirror image will be that same distance away, but simply on the other side, reflecting on what your movements are doing. So it becomes a lot like it becomes a lot of muscle memory rather than just mm -hmm. calculated like, you know, hits like, OK, so I'm gonna go over here and then my your mirror image that right there at that right time. It sort of becomes sort of like that. But at the same time, it's a lot of intuition. It's hard to describe because you can't really teach blood like Bloody Queen mirrors as easy as like dream witch pressure unfortunately but with those with those bloody queen mirrors just trying to keep a note of how far away your mirror image is away from or try to keep note of your own image like how far away from it you are from your mirror and then your mirror image will be that distance away too and then if you also know where you placed that mirror image and then you know the map you could sort of predict where the survivors are going to run like an arms factory if i place my mirror image right outside, like the the sec the second back window, right outside, and then my mirror image basically has like full control of that little top area, but not the back area. So I would have to go inside and then cut them off, and then it's a whole other like ballpark of mm -hmm. tight guiding in that situation. So just try to keep note of how far away you are from your own from the mirror itself, and then you get back to the mirror image. That's the best tip. All right, Tay Tay is asking, can you ask him if he could do a snake reveal? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so if you have a snake, I have know? three ball pythons. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> then you should do a snake reveal then. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do a snake reveal later. It's coming. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, have we answered this question from Ra? I'm not sure how to pronounce this again. It's a, it's <laughs> a, do, I don't. It's a Vietnamese name, so... 
Yeah. <laughs> so he or she said, or rather asking, can you please share some tips to hit survivors with an image? I rarely hit with the mirror image so far. And therefore, I could only use mirror to teleport. Oh, all right. I sort of, I sort, I sort of answered it earlier, but it one one tip that I could get for um far distance mirrors also, if you see like the survivors like constantly like disappearing in your own body, you can take a good guess that your mirror image is like near them or either right on top of them. But sort of the lines also, depending on the lines on both of your images, you could gain like a sense of how close okay. the image is. The brighter your image is and the more dimmer theirs is. It's sort of I, I sort that. of an indicator. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of an indicator of how far are from your image. And it could give you a good like understanding of the range like the range itself. And again, knowing that knowing the map, if you know where they like where the survivor is, you can guess the path that they're running and then just running run accordingly. And it's important to note that her image has a wide has a wider hitbox than than yeah, what just, like you know I like than what she implies yeah so you could so you could just go like start swinging oh, like so <laughs> i don't know <laughs> it's okay so in psyche i don't know what just happened yeah it is i actually lose this game terribly because of that same uh <laughs> well, it's one that we discussed this earlier <laughs> Mm -hmm. where I find so where I find the merc where I find the mercenary first and then I find the first officer. <laughs> this is this is what I was referencing earlier. You don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. You don't want to chase the seer around to first stop and then just follow him the rest of the game. <laughs> and I'm like, um and I and I think I say I'm like, oh I don't know what I'm doing right now. <laughs> so mm -hmm. but Hokage and Psyche, really good players. I know. Alright, for Betty, she's yeah, asking when will all for one <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where they got this meme from, but ever since one person was like, oh, like some something something pancakes. Someone was like, oh, what's the offer one play makes some pancakes? And then everyone <laughs> has made it a running meme to just, wow. well, just spam pancake tree, pancake tree. And then I said, okay, if I ever get 10 wins in a row on stream, I'll do a pancake stream. Wait, so but that never happens. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I always, I always, my little tip is I always make sure to not try near like the seventh to eighth game, and then uh, yeah, like like this game, this game, I'm like, you know what, I'm I'm, I'm gonna just intentionally throw and say, ha ah, guys, sorry, I lost because this is like the eight, this this would have been like the eighth game in a row, and I'm, I don't want to do Peggy so. Pizza. <laughs> Never, Betty. Never. <laughs> All right, most of these questions are already answered. From Daniel mm -hmm. and Identity V Alex, how about this mm -hmm. one? Uh, by Rondel? Mm -hmm. Have you answered this? Uh, when, was the right? uh, when you have a survivor tied to the rocket chair and somebody is coming, is it better to use mirror than to try to hit close or go to the survivor? them then use mirror to defend the rocket chair oh okay so i have i haven't answered that specifically so if you're camping this is where bloody queen can get good with camping but if you're camping and you see a survivor running straight towards you whether it be a merc or uh really anybody it's up to you to determine if you want to mirror image that so if you think you could get the mirror image off in time and hit them before they're able to get to the chair your main goal is to just double hit you're not necessarily going for oh terror shock play and stuff to save. Um, you're just going for a double hit to slow down the cipher rush as much as possible. So, depending on if you know where the rescuer is coming from and if you can get the hit off, then you could use that mirror image to get that double hit and then immediately go for um, and then immediately go for uh, whoever got rescued off of the chair, which they will be trying to body block, but you could just simply wait for that to tick down all the way past tight turner. But it, say if they do get the save off and you didn't get any hit, hit off, what you could do is you could hit the mercenary, they get the save off, and then you could try and focus fire onto the mercenary as much as possible. And it, it won't matter where the person who just got rescued goes because as long as you keep track of them, you could just mirror image them and just hit them back down. Like, like that's the best case scenario, and that will work 90% of the time because if you get that double hit, it's it throws off the survivors like routine like by, by a lot. Because rather than just saying, oh, mercenary will just go for second save. No, they need to get someone off of another, another cypher to either heal the mercenary or they go for the second save. Mm -hmm. Because 
like realistically, the person who just got rescued shouldn't be up that long, or unless they just do a really good kite. Um, personally, that happens very, very rarely. But if, you, but it's just depending on if you could see the rescuer and if you know where they're coming from. You don't want to just use your image in one direction and pray that the rescuer is coming from there. Then you're just asking to not catch somebody and not get a double hit and not get another early, mm. early down off the for the second save. So again, it's just intuition and knowing where the rescuer is coming from. That's that's basic game sense. Mm -hmm. I'm so distracted with this gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Don't worry about it. It's Hokage. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, Hokage. Best year player. <laughs> I mean, she was also a top one survivor before. She was. I remember those days. All right, moving on. It's from Silverus. Not a bloody queen main, but I have a question that I think would be good. Where mm -hmm. are the spots that you think are good to put down a mirror? When you are chasing someone around the loop, would you place down a mirror? And if yes, how so? And where would you put the mirror? Also, are there any tricks with her mirror? I know that on the pirate ship, you could be on the other set of stairs. And then place a mirror in between. Mm -hmm. That's a long question. <laughs> so I did <laughs> so I did answer that list. <laughs> so I did answer those little tips and tricks earlier with all those like, you know, going up the stairs and yeah, uh, you could you could skip that, I guess. Yeah, but with um with the with the little how to I know like in a tight kiting situation, say if say if I'm behind a wall and it's a really tight kite situation, you don't want to place your mirror image in front of the wall because that will place your mirror image like way too far out. You want to place it like right in front of you, like aligned right against the wall, so your mirror image has a lot of room to work with and very little room for the survivor to to run run away with. So you'll All see, right, like, yeah. if you put, I if you that from experience, I used to mess up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you if you noticed in those times, like, have you ever placed like that image, like, right, like, in front of like an object, and then it pushes your mirror image like ever so slightly forward, and then it can't get that hit. Yeah, like I find that like annoying. that. Yeah, so. Typically, in tight kiting situations, you want to place it right before objects, so your mirror image has a lot of room to work with in those tight kiting situations. Mm -hmm. That works for nearly every single tight kiting situation. The closer it is to you, the more control the mirror image will have. As long as it's behind the wall. You don't want to place it into walls. Like, if you're in the middle in Arms Factory, instead of placing the mirror image inside of that little middle area, you want to place it right outside of that first pallet or any of the pallets, and then just let your mirror image run wild in there. Because then where else are they going to go? Because you have full control over it. But if you place it right in front of that wall, you lose a lot of control. You're forced to switch. And then the survivor is probably able to vault one of the pallets and then get away. Which wastes a lot of time. Yeah, I have to keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> Just behind objects. I think we've already answered this one from Purple. It's the Purple Frogo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess it's a more personal question. Personally, I prefer uh for the the question asks, do I place the mirror down to get to another area or use it? So honestly, it depends on my spawn, um, or like where the other survivor spawned in relativity to where I did. If I know the spawns and I'm confident of it, in it, then you could just immediately mirror, and then get onto somebody. Mm -hmm. Personally, I like that play style because you're already in a chase. Like regardless if it's like a mercenary or something but if i don't know the spawns that accurately or if it's a spawn that i know a lot of survivors spawn in like there's one arms factory where you spawn like outside a shack mm -hmm. and and there's typically you can see three survivors at that point you could see one sort of by maze you could see one in the back by shack and then you could see another one um neat like closer to Shaq. It's a weird spawn, but it's where three survivors are, and you can immediately know who's where. So, for example, you have one mercenary spawns, like, near middle, mm -hmm. so you know the mercenary is there, so you could immediately go up, and then you see the prospector, and then all, all of a sudden you see a, a mechanic running away in the back. <laughs> so Yeah, I think I remember that spawn. I remember doing a spawn point guide for every map. Yeah, that's a good spawn for any hunter. Because you can immediately track three of them. 
But with Bloody Queen, it's even better because you could get onto one of those three immediately, and it could easily change the, like the favor of a game into your favor because you're already on somebody, and you already can transition away if it's not the person you want because there's somebody in the back and there's somebody near middle. Mm -hmm. So that's a good spawn. <clears throat> All right, this is a nice question. It's from respect my pee pee. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, what made him start playing Bloody Queen, and is she difficult to use or is she easy to use? <laughs> so with Bloody Queen, I remember I remember when like the like the co like the concept got released, and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> I did I did, I didn't even know this woman's abilities, but holy, she was a wife, and I needed to have her. <laughs> And it wasn't even before, it, like I saw her initial, like when she like her original costume, mm -hmm. like she like this mat, like this red, like a lot of people were just calling her, um, what do you call it? Just red at the time because that she wore a red dress. She was this mm -hmm. pale woman, black eyes, demon looking, and I'm like, she is aesthetically really cool. Um, but then what even amplified this want to have her is her skin kit. Her skin room got revealed, and I'm like. Okay, I'm spending money. <laughs> I will spend as much money as it takes, no matter what her ability. I even I didn't even know this woman's ability yet, so it, it was just even a plus side that her ability is the best in the, is the best for hunters in the game. Mm -hmm. But it was just what inspired me to play her was just purely how she looked. <laughs> it wasn't even how she played. I didn't care for that. I'm like I'm playing this hunter no matter what. Like Dream Witch, yeah, she looked cool, I guess. But I, but I was like, nah. It was just a pure bloody queen as a wife, and I must have. So that's honestly as straightforward as I can get with why I started playing bloody queen. Well, it's understandable. I remember buying Dream Witch because of the Tommy skin. I really like that skin. <laughs> yeah, I have the Tommy skin. I have no intention of using it, but I have it <laughs> in case one day I may be interested in playing her. <laughs> All right. Do's and don'ts for BQ. How do I miss that? Do's and don'ts for BQ. Oh boy. Um, do what you can do is sometimes chase forwards, if in case you have to. Mm -hmm. Forwards aren't as effective in long kiting anymore because their football got that like yeah, got nerfed. So that's so annoying. Yeah. So it's a, so forwards are now at a dilemma if mm -hmm. if they want to waste the football to kite or if they do use it, you waste a lot of their football and football and now the forward's kinda useless the rest of the game. So what you could do is you could easily just bait out the football. If they use it for a long time, mm -hmm. you just wasted their ability and now they're just a decode bot with minus decode. Um at, on the same end, how you could for, probably chase them would, down. Would you chase a cowboy or no? I would I would chase a cowboy, yeah. Personally, if I was Bloody Queen, because Bloody Queen has a better time versus Cowboy than other hunters. Because again, I'm on the pain train that is Blue Race Cars Cowboy constantly, but and it's not fun. You can ask anybody. I'm like, I hate this character. <laughs> I hate Priestess the most. But <laughs> oh, why do you hate Priestess the most? Uh, she's a whole other can of worms. She's a really, she's a safe pick because in the kite. If she's not in, she doesn't necessarily have to tight kite. All she has to do is place a portal. You're stunned, mm -hmm. and that that really trips me up sometimes because it's like, okay, well, not not it's not necessarily on Bloody Queen. Bloody Queen, she does handle her a lot better. But if it's any other hunter, then first of all, her long portal can mm -hmm. save can save games. I have seen it done many times to myself. I've seen it done to Chinese hunters can save games just because of a, someone is in the right place at the right time and then in a really and then they just take the portal and then that's it that's the game that will in on, in on its own end games before they even start off the first save or and herself in the tight kite you place down the portal you stun the hunter and then they can relocate they can transition which is just good for them because we're like where else are they where else are they supposed to go because you know they're already in a good area, so they could just place portals and, you know, end up making you cry. But that's why I don't like Priestess. Because a lot of, like, the actual kiting characters have an ability that they have to rely on to kite well. And they actually run out of that ability. But Priestess, she constantly gets it, and then she can also use it anywhere. So it's not very fun. 
Now I understand. What? <laughs> it's very, it's, go against Mumu's Priestess, and uh, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll understand even more. <laughs> I haven't seen Mumu play Priestess, but I know she has a S badge for Priestess. Yeah, she got the S badge from probably beating me in the ground all the time, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, moving on. Uh, another subscriber is asking for six questions. Oh boy. Uh, when to use the mirror? Mm, we answered this one. How to hi how to mm -hmm. counter cipher rush? This is nice. Mm -hmm. Should we camp? Which That's is the easiest the oh, map with her <laughs> and the hardest? Best persona. Best trait for her. Tell okay. Just a, just a safe time. Camp. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Just a, just a safe time. Uh, six five six five. Uh, is already answered. Uh, three is an automatic yes. Obviously, you should camp in nearly every situation. Um, but and when to use the mirror? Uh, I explained that. So t I'll answer two and four. How to counter cipher rush? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. So say if I chair somebody. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, yeah, cy cipher. <laughs> cipher rush. Cipher rush is arguably the most annoying thing as a hunter to face because you have yeah, your the moment a game starts the moment the game starts you're under pressure you're on a clock it's just it's just a whole mess and because of that clock it could lead you to do some very unfortunate mistakes and because of that mistake you will lose the game based off of one survivors they can make as many mistakes as they want mm -hmm. because they could easily recover from it but as a hunter yep. if you make one mistake that could cost the game for you do you know how many games i've lost just because of a missed blink or because of a hit that I didn't want secure on the double rescue. Not fun. But anyways, back to the question of countering Cypher Rush. If you're playing Bloody Queen, her best, one of her most annoying qualities is that she could easily patrol the Cyphers with her image without actually having to leave the camp. Yeah. So like I said, so... That's her if, best feature, to be honest. Yes, exactly. Because she can camp and then she could also pressure. So... This comes with basic game knowledge, uh, Bloody Queen, Mirror knowledge, and just overall Cypher placements. If you could pressure a survivor off a Cypher, even land a hit, that slows down their decoding because they're off the Cypher, and it also slows down their decoding by giving that injured, you know, decrease in decode time, if that makes sense. Landing that hit onto a si onto a person on a cipher, whether it's a terror shock or not, is Wait, still a hit and it pressures them. Mechanics. Yeah, <laughs> that's always, always a fun always a fun time. <laughs> but um, it's a, that's just that's just beginning of season things. Yeah. But um, with with that ca with that camping while well, you know countering the cipher rush, landing that hits. Very important because you add a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. They're injured. They need to heal. They waste time. The more time that you can get them away from the coding, it's the better. Yeah. Like this is where Feaster, like Feaster, can do this well, but he can only do this well in open areas like Lakeside, or say maybe even Sacred. But the reason why Bloody Queen does it best is just because of that mirror. She could just push them off, regardless, even if she doesn't get the hit. Having that mirror image there for pressure stops the decoding and it saves you a lot of seconds because that's one less cipher being done and being insta popped which is one of the best qual which is like you said one of the best quali qualities about her. Mm -hmm. and like i said earlier which is the easiest map with her um personally arms factory because it's closed small. map mm -hmm. small yeah and arms factory is arguably the worst map to be on but she gets but arguably her best one because of how closed it is and how she can counter all the very overpowered loops even Arms Factory itself. And the hardest map, um, Red Church, like, uh, for aforementioned reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, have you answered this one? How to be precise when swinging at the survivor with a mirror image? <laughs> you, yeah. see, you see me a lot playing Bloody Queen, I'm just swinging, dude. <laughs> Like any any bloody queen player can't really answer that. You yeah, see it's any really Chinese hard question. <laughs> yeah, like any 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 bloody queen. Um, some are more accurate than others. It's not necessarily just how when you're swinging. Um, you wanna what I tend to do is after I place a mirror image, I'll stand still for like a second, 
Now that second allows you, instead of just moving, it allows you to reposition your hit, and it also allows you to predict the pattern that the survivors are going to move in rather than swinging. If you swing, that survivor can gain a lot of distance, and that could misjudge where like you are going and how far away from you, how how far away they are from you. So you want to just stand still, not swing instantly, but evaluate what the survivors are going to do, and that should land for a more accurate swing rather than just moving alongside as you're placing the mirror image. You'll see me stand still a lot, so the survivors will start to panic because, oh, they see the image, but what they're really doing is just showing me how they're going to juke it out and which way they're going to run in, in retaliation. Why'd they send Seer? Uh, so, that's a, so just stand still and then evaluate. You're good. <laughs> it's almost rank time. Do you want to continue later or tomorrow? Um, yeah, <laughs> that's fine. Right, yeah, it's already 30 minutes. It's all right. All right. <laughs>